So in this video, we're gonna learn how to make this water drop shader inside of Blender. This works with both EV and Cycle Cylinder Engine. We have a rain amount slider over here, and if I hit the play button, and I just reduce the rain amount to something, let's say, like zero, then there will be no rain. But if I increase this to one, there will be this uh, rain dropping on top of this car, as you can see. I'm going to use this uh, BMW file that's available on the Blender page if you want to download. And uh, yeah, let's get started. So I'm going to divide that and I'm going to have a shader editor over here. And uh, let's remove all of these and have just a principal shader. Let's plug it in. First, I'm going to add a noise texture over here. You can use 3D noise, but uh, 2D would be good enough and uh, this will give you more performance. So I would recommend to use 2D. Now add in a color ramp. I'm going to put this fact into there and then let's see how this looks. Let's use a texture coordinate. So go over into the input and the texture coordinate and use the object to derive the vector. I'm using an object coordinate because it will just make the water drop consistent among different objects in my scene. So that's why I'm using the object, but you can use the UV if you want to. Now to make this more, look more like a water drop, what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase this black slider all the way to over here until just some tiny drops are left, something like that. Now in this texture, the white part would be the water drop and the black part would be nothing. Just adjust the noise texture to my liking, the scale and the detail as well. I'm going to just reduce the detail to zero because water drops are quite smoother. Just tweak the scale until you're happy. Then maybe add a little bit of detail so that we can get those smaller drops as well. So I think that looks quite good. Now to see how this looks, I'm going to put this through a bump node. So let's move it over here. Add in a bump node. Plug the color into the height and the normal into the normal. And I want to see this thing. Oh, uh, that, that's actually happening because of the clear core thing that I have. Uh, let me quickly just disable the clear code and you will see exactly how it will look. So now I made a glossy paint. So let's put the normal into the normal. As you can see that the strength is a little bit too much powerful. Now uh, to change the strength, you might think that, okay, I can just change the strength over here, but uh, we let's not use that one. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this white color to be closer to something like this. As you can see, it's becoming more and more like water drops. This is uh, just one layer of water drop. So I'm going to quickly minimize that and minimize this one as well. I'm going to put them like that. So this is just the static drops. Now we need to add some moving water drops. Before doing anything, let's just comment this as the static drop. Otherwise, we will just forget what I did here. So I'm going to go over here and add in a frame. And put, just drag over these two to select them and press G for grab. And move them over to the frame and then just do a left click and this will be moved over here. Now you can move the frame to move all these nodes. Now, if you wanted to uh, move them out of the frame, you can't do that just by pressing G. So what you can do is press Alt P and they will be moved out of that. Alt P is the shortcut for unparenting some objects. So anyway, so when that's done, I'm going to quickly rename this frame to be static drop. Oh, sorry, not this one, but the level. Now I'm going to add a uh, moving water drop. So duplicate these two and uh, press Alt P to move them out of that. I'm going to use the same object coordinate over here. I'm going to put this color to be a bit whiter so that I can see. 
I'm going to just quickly add in a mapping node over here just to change the scale. I want maybe 0.5-ish. That would be good. I'm going to minimize that and move it on top. So this one will be our moving water drops. Okay. I mean, these would be animating. Let's just rename this one. So add a frame. Grab all of them into frame. Rename this to be moving one, let's say. Now you might be asking, like, how the hell are we going to animate these water drops just by using uh, a noise texture? Actually, there's a easy method to do that just by using a 3D noise texture and then just moving them. But I'm using this method because you can use this method to do the same stuff inside of uh, any other game engines. And there will be another video coming up shortly after this one in which I'm going to show you guys how to use just textures to do the same thing instead of using this kind of nice textures and doing that procedurally. So once that's done, let's just go ahead and try to animate that. To do that, first what I need is a move, a mask that determines which part of the raindrop is going to move and which part is going to be static. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I can add in a color ramp and put it right about here and make it pure white, something like that. Let's make it constant and make it 0 0.0001. So it's like this. This white portion should be the part that will be moving, I mean animating, and the other portion wouldn't be animating. So this is the mask of and let's say a moving drop mask so that's created to do any kind of animation we need as we hit the play button some kind of time node that will just increase over time so blender doesn't have one by default but you can create that Okay, before doing anything, I'm going to just delete this bump node over here and just going to move it to the right side. So, to create a time node, I'm going to just press Shift A, insert in a value, rename that to be current frame. As this value will increase, this value over here will be this current uh, current frame value over here. So to have this value over here, what I'm going to do is do a right click, add a driver. I think this is a quite easy way to do that. If you want to just do it with animation, just go to frame zero, hit I on the keyframe, and then go into the last frame over here, and just uh, type in whatever the frame we want it to be. So put 1000 and keep another keyframe by hitting I, and that should be done. Also, just to change, uh, if you do that by this method, then just change the graph to be a linear. Otherwise, it will start slow and then go fast and then become slow again. So, if you if you don't want to do that using animation keyframe, then you can use something like a driver. So, let me show you guys how to use the driver. So, to do that using the driver, what you can do is go over here, right-click, copy data path, and then go and add a driver then do show in drivers editor this will then pop up and then what you can do here is remove this one add input variable change this to be the scene then just go and select the scene and the path should be this one the frame current that we copied from that one just press enter if there's no error that then you've done this correctly now this is the name of the variable that we're going to use. You can rename this if you wanted to, but just keep it as it is and then just check the update dependencies. And then I think it's working now. Let me quickly see. And as you can see, it's working. This value is going up as the frame is going up. But this is the current frame. We need the time value. To get the time, I can just divide this with a value of 24 because the 24 is the frame rate so i can just do add a math node let's do a divide 
by 24 sorry 24 and put this one over here this is like the time output that I'm getting now so if I wanted to see this one I can just press ctrl shift and left click and as you can see over in the as it goes on the time is increasing and the value is increasing that's why it's becoming whitish and if I increase it too much it will actually glow if I enable the bloom as you can see as you can see that the time is increasing so yeah uh, we want this to loop so to loop this thing what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out the integer part of the output that is coming from here so so I can add a math again I'm gonna use a lot of math here but uh, it's gonna be easy now I'm gonna choose something like floor and then I'm gonna just put this one over here now if we see that it's quite it's like zero and as it goes to 24 it becomes brighter actually it's a value of one if I go on more then it will be like twice as bright because it's 20 is 24 times 2 is 45 and so on as you can see it's going step by step that's actually the integer part so it's like 0 over here 1 2 3 4 and so on so we need to subtract this value so let's add in a math node it's gonna be subtract we're subtracting from the original value this floor value so we're getting just the range from 0 to 1 and it will be looping as you can see here as you can see it's looping we can use this thing to animate the raindrops remember we created a mask before which was like the the moving mask which will determine which part of the ma uh, which part of the water will be moving we're going to use that mask now so let's do a multiply and uh, also, okay now I need to plug the divide value over here the multiply the mask goes into the second socket and also you can just unplug this nodes like that and plug it over here you can do that by pressing control and hitting the left click and it will just move it out so I'm gonna put this one over here and uh, let's put this back in so we're just multiplying that with this mask and now if I play that as you can see that the drop is animating okay now to remove these uh, side this stretchy part over here we're going to use a walled up mask now these, uh, these are used to create the animation mask so I'm going to just do uh, to add a frame and rename this to be animation mask now what I can do is I can add a walled up mask which is quite easy just add a geometry node then I can use the normal pass over here do separate XYZ and get the Z because the white part meaning the white portion means this is like flat on the ground and it's facing upwards and if it's blackish then it means that this face is not facing upwards so you're gonna use this data and you're gonna do uh, subtract let's add a math node uh, let's use the add and I'm gonna decrease this value so it becomes a little bit darker like this another math node change this to be power and I'm gonna increase the power Okay, before doing that, let's just clamp this value. And I'm gonna increase this. Okay, let's decrease that, okay? Just like this. Something like that. I think it's quite good. Now to make this one effect using this world of mask, I can just add another math node and do a quick multiply with this math this node and as you can see that black portions are cut off and you're only getting this one over here 
Okay. Now to see how does that looks with the water drops, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create the bump map. Let's just add a vector and a bump node and plug this color to the height and I'm gonna put the normal inside of the normal. And let's see how does that looks like. So as you can see, those static drops are there, but uh, we also need to add the moving drops. So how are you going to do that? Just we need to add this one with this one. So I'm just go ahead and add a math node, put it over here, put this one to there, and do a clamp. It's already set to add, and I think it's gonna look horrible. Yeah, it's looking horrible because of the this uh, value over here, which is quite like pure white. So I'm gonna just reduce this one down to something reasonable, something like this one. So as you can see, this drafts are done. Now if I scrub through the timeline, you can see that those are not animating. And that is happening because we're not using this animation mask. So before passing it to the height inside of the bump socket, just add another math node and mul use multiply to multiply this value with the animation mask. It should work, I guess. You can see that it's working. We are not getting the small water drops that we are having. And, I, and actually that's happening because in this node over here, if you just see that, there is no white portion left for the static drop to be. So to do that, what I can do is uh, inside of the animation mask, let's make uh, another math node, plug it in, and change this to, let's say, add. And over here, what I'm going to add is the static drop mask which should be just adding in another color ramp node that we did for the moving drop mask. This is the mask for the static drop mask. So static drop mask. Then I can put this one over here. I can change this to be like constant and one zero 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 one. So here we got the static mask that I needed, and then I can just put this one right in here, and I'm gonna put this one to be in the second slot of the add node that we added. And now, if I see the multiply, you can see that those static drops are there, and if I now see the principal shader, you can see that we have the static drops and also we have the moving drops. And now if I hit play, you can see that this is animating. Like if we could focus on this one, you can see that the drop is like inverted. And uh, to fix that, we can just invert this time node that we get. Let me quickly show you guys what I mean. So right about over here, it's going from black to white and then repeating itself. To fix that, what I can do before passing it to this one is just add another math node, change it to subtract. And this time I'm just put these two over here, put this one into the second socket and change this to one. So we just inverted this thing. So now, as you can see, it's becoming white and then going to black. So now if I go ahead and see the principal shader and play the animation, as you can see, that the water drop is first dropping and then it's fading out. And that's what we needed. So we're almost done, but we need to do this exact same thing four or five times to get the 
result that I have over here. You can do as many times as you want, but um, at the end, we're gonna just bake these textures so that you don't have to use this many nodes. So you can use as many textures as you like. The more texture you're gonna use, the more uh, variation on the water drop you will have. I wanna show you guys how to do that on the next video where I'm gonna just do the exact same thing that I did. We're just gonna use more than one moving uh, moving water drop texture, okay? And other than that, thanks for watching guys. And if you like this one, make sure you hit the subscribe button so that you won't miss the future episodes that I'm gonna be making. There will be uh, something like a water drip shader, which will be on given, which will be applied on these sides, which is currently looking empty.